Welcome to Vaccine Mandate Whiplash. After a stop and start from the courts, there's a new deadline facing New York City teachers. Timing out more showers and thunderstorms and all of the cool, dry air behind them. It's the largest flea market in the Bronx, and New York Live takes you to Fordham Flea. This is News 4 Now for September 28th. I'm Adam Cooperstein, and the city's on-again, off-again vaccine mandate for teachers and school staff is back on again, but with a catch. A three-judge panel ruled the mandate can move forward on Monday night, days earlier than expected, and that allows the city to require all school employees to get at least one dose of the COVID vaccine or risk losing their jobs. But the deadline got extended, so they now have until the end of the day on Friday to get that shot. The vast, vast majority have done it already, and we thank them. Uh, but for anyone who has not gotten a dose by Friday at 5 p.m., after all the encouragement, all the support, all the incentives, we're going to then assume you're not coming to work Monday morning as a vaccinated uh, employee. There's no weekly option for testing for city schools. The Department of Education says at least 87 percent are partially vaccinated already. But lawyers for a group of teachers opposed to the mandate say they're going to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. The family of Gabby Petito is addressing the media as the search for her fiance gets scaled back in Florida. Brian Laundrie is wanted on a federal arrest warrant related to his activities after Gabby's death. Authorities in Florida say the search for Laundrie will now be targeted and based on intelligence. Laundrie's family's lawyer issued a statement saying his parents do not know where he is and speculation that they helped him flee to avoid arrest is quote, just wrong. Petito's family talked to the media on Long Island Tuesday afternoon. We don't stop, you know, remembering Gabby and keeping her name out there and, and fighting for, for other people out there like her. Uh, she's always with us every day. She's giving us signs. Uh, it's difficult. You know, we've been talking. We don't, like, where do you go from here? How do you go back to normal? Whatever normal may be from here on out, but we have each other. Uh, we're, we're a big family, we have a huge support network, and we're just going to keep pushing forward and living every day and loving every day because that's what Gabby did and that's what, that's what we, we need to do. Laundry has been missing for more than a week. Petito's remains were found in Wyoming's Grand Teton National Park last week, and her death has been ruled a homicide. Disgraced singer R. Kelly could spend the rest of his life in prison. R. Kelly was found guilty on all nine charges against him from his sex trafficking trial in Brooklyn. The seven men and five women on the jury listened to 45 witnesses, including 11 accusers who say the R&B star sexually abused them. In the end, the jurors refused to believe claims by Kelly's defense team that the plaintiffs were groupies trying to cash in on his fame. Kelly still faces prostitution charges in Minnesota and federal child porn charges in Illinois. His attorneys say they plan to appeal Monday's verdict from Brooklyn. No. no. Yes, it is. Approaches me. No. An umpire at a youth baseball tournament in New Jersey couldn't keep himself in check. A spectator sent news for this cell phone video from the weekend game between 10 year olds in White House Station. It shows the ump cursing at parents after a disputed call at home plate. The league president says everyone was wrong here, not just the umpire, although the umpire will no longer work for the league. The umpire pool is shrinking at an alarming rate. These guys just don't want to do it. You know, they don't want to take the beating. Every day we receive an email saying, guys, I just can't do this anymore. The league president says he'll be reaching out to Major League Baseball to try to get their help to spread civility among everyone in the game. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Marie LaRosa. Showers and thunderstorms continuing this evening. Some may have the gusty winds and the heavy rainfall before everything moves through. So keep in mind that may be an issue if you have to be out on the roads over the next several hours into the late evening. Timing it out, there's that line. That's with the cold front. So by 8, 9 o'clock should be clearing Long Island, Jersey Shore. And talk about clearing skies, eventually clearing temperatures coming down, but also that humidity. Not that it was really bad today, but you can see with dew points down, 
down into the 40s by tomorrow morning. It's that crisp fall feel and with dew points in the 40s that's going to allow those temperatures to really drop. We'll see the 40s, maybe even some areas dipping into the upper 30s, higher elevations north and west, but starting off in the 40s from Sussex, Poughkeepsie, White Plains, the low 50s for the city, 53 for the low, 55 in Merrick and Islip. But again, those temperatures, especially for the Hudson Valley, close to or below average. And this is where we sort of stay the next couple days with fall settling in. The city's newest flea market sets up shop in the Bronx and New York Live shows us what makes Fordham flea different than all the rest. Today I'm here in the Bronx at Fordham Plaza getting a preview at the very latest flea market in town. Okay, Marco, tell me about Fordham Flea and how this was inspired by Bronx Night Market. When the pandemic started, you know, we all, like everybody else in New York and the world, we sat home and we were waiting for that time to, to open up again, to the world to open up again. And once we started the application process for the Bronx Night Market, we realized that there was like increase of almost 500% on small merchandise, arts and crafts, knick-knack vendors. Initially, we wanted to incorporate more merch vendors into the Bronx Night Market, but we realized it might change the texture and then the team thought let's just create a phone and flea like you know dedicated to like arts and craft they dedicated to knickknacks accessories and we really went all out trying to make an experience Nettie's not is the um, all natural product line most of my products are made out of aloe vera I have two kinds of aloe vera I have a limited edition that came from Jamaica I went to Jamaica saw the aloe was different and loved it so I brought it back up and I have my limited edition over here I have aloe mist oils mascaras lip scrubs natural deodorants oh it smells beautiful oh i love this 80 percent of our vendors are, are female it's like female-owned businesses and 70 percent of all of them total are uh, poc that are coming together and then created something so the bar theory is full of fun stuff for the tub and even for your house we promote self-care skin care self-love from the inside out we sell bath bombs organic soaps and we also sell shea butter based soaps. We have this bronze shimmer oil. It has maca powder and it's just infused with oil. And it's evening out my fading <laughs> self tanner that's already on. So, And this is the last Sunday of every month, correct? Yes, uh, last Sunday of every, every month from 12 to 7 p.m. Fordham Plaza of the Bronx. If this was just the preview, I am absolutely coming back for the full production with a bigger bag. Videos obtained by News 4 show a live-in nanny sleeping and lounging in bed at her employer's Staten Island home. And they're just a fraction of what she describes as hundreds of recordings made without her knowledge or her consent. And now that Columbia native tells News 4's Checky Beckford how and where she found that hidden camera. 25-year-old Kelly Andrade's most private moments captured on surveillance video. Me sentí indignada. I felt abused, angry, humiliated. I don't know what he used it for or who else has seen it. Andrade, a 25-year-old au pair from Colombia, says a camera hidden in a smoke detector over her bed captured hundreds of images. In one particular file, I saw myself naked. It also showed me getting dressed when I got out of the bathroom. She spotted the camera back in March, two weeks after she came to America to work for Michael Esposito and his family in their Staten Island home. She says shortly after she found the camera and memory card, the dad arrived home, possibly after seeing her make the discovery. He started banging on the door. Scared for her life, Andrade jumped from a first floor window, taking the camera and SD card with her. So she's in a country that is foreign to her. Um, she doesn't have really any family, friends. She's completely alone. Um, she barely speaks the language. Andrade's lawyer, Zachary Holzberg, filed a civil claim against the Esposito family last week for unspecified damages, citing a hostile work environment. The same day Andrade left the home, she reported the recordings to police. Esposito was arrested and charged with felony unlawful surveillance, but released on his own recognizance. His attorney at the time told the Staten Island Advance any cameras that were installed were installed in his own home for security purposes. This was not the kind of situation where it's her home or her room or her bedroom or in a dressing room. This is the defendant's own home where he lives with his family and there are multiple security cameras. But there's no legitimate reason 
for a security purpose to have the camera placed directly over the nanny's bed. There's not much else visible. Andrade says she still has nightmares, battles, bouts of depression from the fallout that has basically left her homeless in a country where she has no family. No comía. I didn't eat. I lost weight. Many times I thought about committing suicide. No response from Esposito or his attorneys tonight. Andrade is also suing the au pair agency that set her up with a family. Jackie Beckford reporting tonight for News 4 New York. Thank you so much for joining us on News 4 Now. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.